Hello, my name is Chris Burnett. I am the Marketing and Communications Manager at the American Jazz Museum in Kansas City, Missouri. Well, basically every day involves promoting the mission of the museum in some capacity, one way or the other. There it really isn't a typical day, though. I studied music and the various aspects of music, composition, performance, woodwind instruments, and the business side of music. And I was always focused on being a music professional. Well, the necessity of doing that as a professional musician is what brought me to marketing and promotion work, business plans, and the like. Because without that, you won't be successful as a musician. Well, it's like anything else. Music is either a product or a service. If you're recording, it's a product, and it also serves as an advertisement, a record does. But the physical product or download of music, you have to promote people to be aware of it in order for them to purchase it. And the service side of things is your, if you teach lessons, if you perform with a group, you've got to make people aware of those services as well. The reason that online marketing is important is because it's a platform that everyone accesses. A website is vital to any musician or music professional because you can reach the entire planet for a nominal fee, mostly at your time. And having the information on a website that used to comprise a press kit is a lot more efficient and effective because it's self-regenerating. Uh, someone can download your press kit or download your, your music samples and someone else can do the same thing simultaneously or right behind them and you haven't used a stamp or postage to get your music or your message across. Well, I've been a musician all of my life. I started in school band programs. I was trained uh, by a very great band teacher. He was a clarinetist. I started on clarinet, moved to saxophone, added saxophone actually. And after graduating high school, I auditioned for the Air Force band program and the Army band program and was accepted to both. I chose the Army band program because they started you out at more rank, which meant more pay. My initial goal was to earn the benefits for the GI Bill so I could go to college and have that paid for. But I stayed in because I really liked it. I got to travel and then also got to go to school while I was in service. And uh, after 22 years of that, I got out, came back home to the Kansas City area, and have been building a career outside of the military and using what I learned in the military in terms of music and business side, and it's been pretty fun. Well, there are several things, but one of the major aspects of, of the uniqueness of the Kansas City jazz scene is its place in history. The, where we're seated right now on the corner of 18th and Vine, a lot of historic things happen with, with regard to the music. Many of the major performers all came through Kansas City. One of the most innovative musicians in all of jazz history, Charlie Parker, is from this area and cut his teeth here. So that type of history, you can't replace it or manufacture it or 
it just doesn't work. It, it, it's here, it's always been here. There's something about the location of Kansas City being in the middle of the country that caused it to be a, a destination at crossroads. The history of the city itself during a time when uh, the economics were not very good other places. In Kansas City, it was booming and musicians from all around would come here to work. The, the stories are endless and uh, the history and legacy is being perpetuated in the modern times in a, in a very different way by the fact of this museum. The space has been renovated and, and reconstituted and it's become a vibrant part of the culture not only in Kansas City but in the country at large and the world at, at large arguably. My favorite moment, there's a lot of them. Every, every time I come here, I really, I really am amazed and I'm really, I really love it. I, I love working here at the House of Jazz. For me as a jazz musician, it's like, okay, it doesn't get any better than this. But to this point, man, I, I can't choose just one because there are a couple of things. The Rhythm and Ribs, uh, seeing all the hard work of everybody pay off and turn into something tangible, a very successful festival. The, seeing the idea of the Jazz and Dine concept before the first Jam at the Gym uh, concert series concert with Joe Lovano's group, seeing that come off as a very positive add-on package to that concert series, already great concert series, and then, then the concert itself being successful, those are great and then uh, seeing one of my colleagues be recognized for his hard work, Gerald Dunn, by uh, Congressman Cleaver was a great thing to see because a lot of times people take for granted that things just happen and they don't know that people are working behind the scenes and make things happen. So, so I can't just say one thing. There were several things that, that really have, have been pretty cool. And I, and I think that's just going to be the way it is here.